Well, welcome back. Yesterday we did our video discussing appropriate shop attire, mostly, how to stay safe in the shop, some things to think about, and a brief discussion of fire extinguishers. If you haven't seen that video, I strongly encourage you to go back to watch and watch that. Remember, safety is your responsibility. I cannot make you safe in your shop. You have to do that. Today I want to talk about gloves. Gloves are a much contested issue in the blacksmith shop. So you will find people that say you should never wear gloves and other people who say you should always wear gloves. And why is that? It's pretty obvious that the reason you wear gloves in the shop is to protect your hands. Industry is quite heavy in this and if you look at industrial safety sites on the internet you will find lots of recommendations for gloves and gloves are fairly universally required in a lot of industries. But there are reasons that blacksmiths don't like to wear gloves. And I think we should discuss that a little bit and figure out exactly when it should be a good idea to wear gloves and when it should, maybe isn't such a good idea to wear gloves. From a safety point of view, one of the big th issues is people like to wear leather gloves. They're, they're durable. They're comfortable, they give you a good grip, but if you have a piece of hot iron, this has been in the forge, and maybe it's hot, way too hot to hold with your bare hand, but you can grab it with that leather glove. Pretty quickly you find out maybe you shouldn't have grabbed this with the leather glove. It's too hot, you drop it. That glove is still hot. You are still being burned through the glove. You may have cooked the glove and it may be hard to get it off your hand and until you get that hand glove off you haven't stopped the burn from happening. If you grab this bar with your bare hand you know before you right here you know it's too hot to grab the burn will be much less severe than the burn that you are going to get by getting a good grip and going ah. That's going to be a worse burn because the glove is still burning you. If you've been hot and sweaty and there's sweat inside the glove, you're going to get a steam burn and it's going to be a much bigger area of burn. That's one of the big problems with gloves in the shop, especially thin leather gloves. There's exceptions to every rule and I'm not going to tell you never to wear gloves or never to wear leather gloves. The other big safety issue with gloves, especially fabric gloves, is that they can easily be caught in machinery. If I am working at a drill press or a lathe or people who use milling machines and they snag their finger on the edge of a cutter, it may tear a hunk of flesh off. It may tear the end of your finger off. That's a possibility. But if you have a glove on and that rotating cutter spinning at high speed grabs that glove it's going to take your hand with it. That glove isn't going to just tear. The, the, the glove is probably tougher than your flesh is and that will bend your hand around until something gives. It's either the glove tears, you have broken all the tendons and ligaments in your, your hand, torn them to shreds, you have bent your hand all the way around until your fingers meet your arm and the machine stalls. Something has to give. And that is one of the biggest dangers of wearing gloves in a shop, especially around rotating machinery. It's really a bad idea. Now, there are some gloves that are better than others, and I will talk about that as we get into when I think you should wear gloves. But there are a lot of people who, have, instead of a flesh injury that you can take care of probably in the emergency room, or maybe has a month of recovery because you did some bone damage, you can create an injury that will take a year or more to heal and you may never recover from fully. It is a gloves around rotating machinery can be a real problem, especially machinery like a lathe or a mill that has a big chuck that may have parts that want to grab. A drill press, maybe not so much because everything's pretty smooth and in line and there's not stuff sticking out like the, the jaws on a lathe chuck and a grinder not so much. A wire wheel, yes. Those wires on the wire wheel really want to grab a fabric glove. 
I try to never wear gloves around a wire wheel or a, a bench mounted wire wheel. The one that where I'm holding the grinder in my hands and my hands are nowhere near the wheel, that's, that's okay. I did, did talk to one blacksmith, a very safe blacksmith, uh, somebody we all know, but I won't drop his name, said that he was wearing a brand new pair of hot mill gloves. So nice, probably not even quite like these, but a real fuzzy pair of gloves and had a brand new, very coarse belt on his belt grinder. And that belt grinder grabbed the glove and he says this index finger was that much longer than the index finger on his other hand because he stretched the tendons all out of place and it took a while for that to heal. It, it came back and he's doing just fine now, but that's one of the risks. Had he snagged his finger on that, that same belt without a glove on, he would have torn some flesh off. It would have healed faster. It would be a much shorter term injury to recover from. So think about that when you decide to wear gloves. From a work standpoint, a glove in your left hand, if you're right-handed, and you're holding tongs in your left hand isn't so bad. But a glove in your right hand makes it harder to hold a hammer. This is slippery. I can't grab that hammer as well with this. So I'm going to be not as efficient in my, my forging if I'm wearing a glove in my right hand. Any glove. Cloth gloves are worse. Leather gloves not not as bad. That also means I have to grip tighter, which increases my risk of wrist and elbow injuries. Tendonitis in the elbow is a terrible thing. Blacksmith's elbow is real. Overgripping is one of the causes. So a glove might make you overgrip. You will do better work if you don't have a glove on your right hand. Oh, why do we wear gloves? I mean, that, that's the argument for not wearing gloves, and there are a lot of Smiths that that's where they leave it. Never wear a glove in the shop, except the, the minor burns. But is that practical? I don't think so. Um, as I get a little older and I get tired of all the little burns from scale on the back of my hand, and as I work bigger axes and adzes and other tools that put off a lot of radiant heat that you can't, you know, it's not like working a bar like this. It's working a, a big piece and that radiant heat just roasts your knuckles and you can't work very well without gloves. So you sometimes have to wear gloves. If you're working with punches and you're down close to hot work and you're driving a punch, chisel, drift, there's a lot of radiant heat coming off of here. You, you will have seen in the hammer making video that I was wearing a glove on that left hand while we were punching. That's just I think that's just necessary and most people will do that. Again, thin leather gloves are going to heat up, it's going to get uncomfortable, you're going to start getting burned, you're going to get away from the work and that glove is going to keep burning you. There's a reason, good reason not to wear these. So what gloves do I recommend? I think we started down that path and I got distracted. So what do I recommend? I don't recommend these. Uh, a welding supplier trying to approach me like I was a big business and thought I was going to spend a fortune sent me these and they just they're, they're good when I make charcoal and I have to get down into the barrel while it's burning to, to seal it up and, and shut the air supply off and I'm close to that hot barrel of charcoal these are nice but I don't wear them in the shop they're just too big and heavy and they, they just aren't aren't useful we don't need those Clearly, I wear these a lot. These are these. Um, these are pretty much ready to be thrown out. There are no holes in the fingers yet. As soon as you get holes in the fingers or seam rips out, throw them away. Gloves are cheap. These are $25 a pair. If I have to buy a new pair of gloves every two weeks, that's 50 bucks a month. That's not going to break me. And I usually get more. I usually get a month out of them. But these are a Kevlar, it says Kevlar 1500, and these are made from the Carolina Glove Company. They call them a Conoguard. And I get these from Amy Pay over at Pay Tool. I know she's not paying me to say that. And they come in men's and women's sizes. There's only, I think, two sizes. So you 
you got to get a little bit lucky with the fit, but they do seem to stretch a little while. The new ones never fit as well as the older ones do. Yeah, those are actually ladies' clothes. Those are the ones I bought for my daughter. Uh, no wonder they, they fit tight. But these are nice gloves when you are working down close to hot material. Do these get hot like leather gloves? Yes, they do. But they heat up more slowly. That radiant heat doesn't get to you as fast, so you can get away from it before you're burning. Even if it gets to the point that it's starting to burn, and you've held on to that, that chisel over the, your work too long, as soon as you let go, these start cooling off much faster than the leather gloves. So I think they're a lot safer in that respect. You don't want to get them wet. You're still going to get a steam burn if these are wet. And while they protect from heat, they will burn. If you splatter these with a lot of hot flux and scale doing a forge weld, you could actually burn little holes in them. These have little holes burned, and the cuffs will burn. So be aware of that. Like I say, you can just put that fire out real quick. Take the glove off, throw it in your slack tub, let it dry out. You can wear it tomorrow, get a fresh pair out of the, the locker. And those are probably my favorite gloves for working around the coal forge and doing work with big hot pieces. They aren't great for holding a hammer. Sometimes I will wear one of these on my left hand where, where I'm close to the work, and I'll still wear the leather glove on my right hand because I get a much better grip on the hammer with the leather glove. That radiant heat will still heat this glove up, and that, that's still a problem. But it, I've pretty well got it figured out, and I know how long I can be close before I've got to get away from it. Now, the, another form of leather glove that is quite popular, you see a lot of people wearing welding gauntlets. Now, these have, but they're, they're hard to work with. They're not very dexterous but they do protect from heat longer than the other leather gloves and they're usually a loose fit which means when you're working and that glove gets too hot and you need to get away from that you let go of the tool you throw your hand down and the glove is gone you're not burning yourself big advantage uh, I'll speak of another another smith that I I've encountered who does lots of big work with hand tools and a hammer so his work is all, hand is always right here he has a stack of left-handed gloves. He throws one off, he grabs another one, and he goes back to work, throws it off. When he gets to the bottom of the pile, he picks them up and starts fresh again. So that's always an option. I would say these nice TIG welding gloves, they're great for TIG welding. Nah, I wouldn't wear them blacksmithing. One problem is the big gauntlet will funnel more stuff, hot stuff. That's always a problem. Every glove will Inevitably, the hot scale will fall down the gauntlet and burn the back of your hand. I got lots of little burns on my left hand from that. You get fewer burns with the glove on than just the hot scale coming in, but it's still going to find its way in there. So that's still a risk that you're funneling some stuff down in there. These are just another version of hot mill gloves. I don't like these as well. They're not terrible, but... They've got less of a, a gauntlet, which is, is better, but not, I don't know, they, just, they don't seem to work as well. I really like these gloves. These are also hot milk gloves. Again, not as good as the Kevlar ones. Now, I've talked down about leather gloves several times here, but they are handy in the shop. You can see I wear these all the time, but I don't wear them for forging very much. These are great for handling stock, moving tools around. If you're running the chop saw or the, um, just bringing materials out of the truck that are maybe sharp on the edge, filthy, dirty, these protect your hands, keep you, keep you a little bit cleaner. They're, they're nice to have. I wouldn't be without them. I just don't recommend wearing them at the forge. The final pair of gloves we'll look at these are something I've just been turned on to recently. These are Dyneema cut resistant glove. They are absolutely useless for hot work. They are some, they have synthetics in them and they have kind of a rubberized palm to give you a really nice grippy surface. These are gloves that I feel completely safe at the belt grinder with. 
I'm more than happy to get close to grind, and that's where they excel. These gloves are abrasion resistant and cut resistant, which means when I get my knuckle a little bit close to that grinder, because I'm trying to get something really delicate, that I'm not going to grind all the flesh off the back of my knuckle. Not the end of the world if you do, but it, it's annoying and it, it hurts. So these help that. They aren't heat resistant. They heat up just as fast as your hands do. Like the leather gloves, they don't cool down as fast as just dropping whatever you're working on. So there's an issue there and you've got to learn to work with that. But I do, do feel these are safe around the belt grinder. I would not recommend wearing these around the belt grinder. Leather gloves are not bad around the belt grinder. I've worn them a lot, but when you get this close to the wheel and you get that little bit of a scrape that's always right at the seam, then your leather gloves have a hole in them and they're trash. Throw them out. So gloves in the shop, they're a good thing and they can be a bad thing. You have to make the decision, should you be wearing gloves, should you not? If they're not appropriate all the time. If you're doing small work and you're working in a coal fire, where the, the heat is concentrated and you can leave access to a you know, longer handle like this in a coal fire, you can work with that a long time before this handle gets too hot. I wouldn't wear gloves. I, I rarely wear gloves in that situation. When you start working, doing big forge welds, gloves get a little more important. Working in a gas forge, I think gloves really become important because there's a lot of radiant heat this does heat up to the point that it's uncomfortable and you have to pay attention even in these you don't want to grab this if it's too hot but again you grab it that's heating up you drop it these cool don't heat up as fast they give you some warning and they cool off faster than leather gloves do and the final thing that I like the, these gloves for is they are a little bit shock absorbing, so working under a power hammer if you're doing that doesn't rattle your, your arms quite so bad because of the gloves are a little bit more comfortable. So that's just my two cents on gloves. Take it for what it's worth. You can love them, you can hate them. Wear them, don't wear them. Just recognize that in some situations, the glove is gonna be the thing that takes a minor incident and turns it into a major injury. You have to watch out for that. I'm not coming to your shop to tell you when you can and can't wear gloves. It's up to you to be safe. You be safe. Keep your safety glasses on. We're going to talk about dust collection and respiratory protection in the final part of our safety series. Series That may be a week or so because I'd like to get my dust collector all set up before I do that so I can show you what I came up with and why and what I did before I had the dust collector to reduce the risk. In the meantime, I sure appreciate it if you subscribe, share the videos with your friends, go watch a few other videos, and we'll see you later.